Well, where we're looking at biological threats, here's an interesting one. Rather than looking at one that directly affects human health through a disease that kills people uh, for obviously getting into their systems and doing it that way, let's look at um, diseases that destroy crops, which have been used throughout history as an actual weapon of war. Because if you can destroy somebody's food source, you can actually kill them that way. And now that we're in a modern scientific era, there's definitely biological weapons on purposely designed to destroy crops. I'll also briefly touch on defoliants in this video. When I did the chemical weapons series, I didn't talk about those, but they kind of fit in here. So defoliants will be the chemical weapon variant, and then there's biological weapon variant. So we'll see. If you think around the world, you get all sorts of different types of crops, whether it be wheat, rice, potatoes, anything like that. Um, you know, all around the world, different crops suited for different environments. There are diseases that naturally occur and sort of pests that would eat the crops. And then obviously there would be methods of biologically in a lab developing a type of chemical or biological weapon. Uh, mostly talk about biological first. You know, making diseases that specifically target that sp uh, sprain of crops. So then, once you've got the disease, you can uh, introduce it either you know, with aerosol spray or whatever else, or dropping it from a canister. Probably just even getting somebody to carry it in their pockets if you had it in powder form and sprinkle it on the field. And then you all of a sudden have you know a disease that would rapidly spread through a field where all the crops are together that would destroy the crop or massively lower the yield of the said crops. And... Um, with a lot of these diseases it's very easy for them to spread. If you've heard of like some of the things like tree blights that you get which can destroy species of trees even when quarantine measures are put in because of how you know winds and seeds and everything work it can be very difficult to actually remove that kind of contamination when it happens. I'm not saying blight's obviously a man-made thing but what I'm saying is with lots of these diseases you could either pick a naturally occurring one then just keep replicating it in a lab till you've got enough as a weapon or you could probably come up with something as well if you had ill intentions. And obviously as a weapon of war that would be devastating if you could wipe out your enemy's food supplies and it could be used as an act of genocide for example if you on purposely destroyed somebody's or a nation's or you know certain ethnic groups sort of food supply that would be obviously another you should see it being used in sort of a terrorist type way or sort of you know st state sponsored genocide. Um, so there's lots of things um, like that so Going on to defoliants, how did defoliants work? Now defoliants are essentially chemical weapons that target trees and leaves and you know greenery. Now you kind of get two kinds of defoliants. You get defoliants that are primarily designed for good use but they might not quite work right. And those are defoliants that are designed for example to kill weeds but not kill vegetables or flowers or whatever else. Now, Lots of these same defoliants still cause lots of health problems to humans because, as you probably know, it's generally not a good idea to um, mess about with, um, you know, all these chemicals, especially if you're putting them on food. But, you know, that's more the benign side of defoliants where they try and make something that can kill weeds and stuff but not actually kill the crops you want to go. Then you get the warfare-style defoliants, Agent Orange probably being the um, most notable example. One of the interesting things is with Novichok, supposedly the Soviets developed that and called it a defoliant to hide the fact it was an incredibly deadly nerve agent. So, as you can see, what's basically happened here is you've got a chemical weapon that's designed to wipe out plants. Now, obviously they're famously, Agent Orange was famously used with some of the other agents of various other colour names in Vietnam where the US used them on the jungles, the idea is it will kill all the leaves on the trees, wither the trees, and it's much easier to see enemy troops moving through the tree line and everything like that. The other thing with defoliants was it caused horrible, horrible effects on the people, you know, came into contact them with, sort of, deformed children if they had children later, um, you know, cancers and things like that, so... The defoliants aren't good regardless. You can have the biological ones that might not affect people at all, but they'll at least, you know, destroy all the crops, which, again, kills people if they starve to death. And then there's obviously the chemical variant of it, which will um, destroy uh, both the crops themselves physically in the spray area, and, you know, horribly affect the people who come into contact with those chemicals. So, no defoliants good, really, in my opinion. They're all sort of quite nasty weapons of war. Now, as I was saying, lots of these kind of crop blights and things do occur naturally. You get sort of weevils that would eat the crop, but that's more an actual living 
thing. I suppose all biological thing weapons are living things, but you know, more like little insects rather than um, being microbes and things like that. But whichever way you look at it, obviously, it's not good if um, a species of plant or crop is wiped out by a disease. That's one of the reasons, obviously, that it makes sense if you're planting things in a sort of national way that you'd vary your crop. You wouldn't just grow one kind of crop. Famous example of where that happened was the Irish potato famine, where, because Ireland mostly relied on potatoes, when there was a potato blight, lots of them starved to death. And obviously, us being English, we didn't really help them at all, so then Britain gets blamed for the genocide. But it's, you know, you don't ever completely rely on one kind of crop, it's a very bad idea. Um, so, as I said, yeah, you get biological weapons that don't just target people directly, but you get biological and chemical weapons that can be made to destroy food sources and things like that. Like I was saying in the other video about anthrax cakes being dropped so cattle would eat the anthrax that would kill them or kill the people eating them, um, you do get the biological weapons. As far as I'm aware, there's none of these that directly poison people. I mean, I know pesticides do, but you don't get any of these, I've, as far as I'm aware, that directly poison the people if they eat the plant afterwards. But what you do get, obviously, is just plants and um, sort of grains and everything being wiped totally out by these engineered diseases. So there you go. That's all about sort of biological weapons and chemical weapons that destroy plants and food stocks. Something you don't always think about straight away because you think of it as a direct method of warfare, but there's also the indirect um, sort of logistical side, sort of side of it, destroying the enemy's food supplies, destroying their infrastructure of these weapons as well.